The um, Asheville City Schools Board of Education. Um, tonight we are discussing the middle school reconfiguration. <clears throat> I'd like to start um, by reading the equity statement for Asheville City Schools. In Asheville City Schools, we are committed to equity and anti-racist policies for all students and staff to learn and thrive. We recognize that our positions come with power, responsibility, and public service for the entire ACS community. We will model our commitment to equity through our practices and decisions. During this meeting, we invite a pause if harm has taken place, a moment to name the harm, and space to practice repair. And we do have a quorum, um, so I'll ask for an approval of tonight's agenda. I so move that we approve uh, tonight's agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, well, welcome everyone. I'm glad to see so many faces out in the crowd. We will start tonight uh, with Dr. Furman giving a um, presentation, kind of a, a review of things that we've been talking about over the last few months. So Dr. Furman, when you're ready. Okay, just as a reminder, you can go ahead to the next slide. Um, so just um, some reasoning, the board um, charged the superintendent and the administrative team to assess the feasibility of consolidating schools as a means to improve our academic effectiveness for all students, operational efficiency, and long-term sustainability for Asheville City Schools. Um, concurrently, one of the primary goals that the board also tasked me with was to find a space on Asheville City School campuses um, for the expansion of our Education and Career Academy, and also to provide additional programming to meet the diverse needs of students um, when we see that traditional school is not matching their needs. Um, so as we undertook this, uh, we did some initial analysis and started to brainstorm some potential solutions. Um, what we found in, um, just through initial analysis is that all of our facilities are under capacity to varying degrees. Um, student enrollment has decreased by approximately 600 students since 2014-15. Asheville City Schools has the same number of staff today that we had in 2014-15, um, and that our state and local budget revenues um, are not at a rate that will sustain current expenditures. Um, we have already initially projected a shortfall in our budget for the upcoming school year by uh, about approximately $4.5 million. So some solutions we started to review were um, some consolidation options, which include decreasing from five elementary schools to four, going down from two middle schools to one, from two high schools to one, and also looking at some alternative configurations such as K-2 schools, three, five, six, eight, nine, twelve. We kind of need the eighth water. option. We kind of need sugar. A 612 option and then also um, really following falling into that um, opportunity to expand services um, for those students that need that non-traditional of making a k-12 option we are also um, working on adjusting staffing allotments so how staff are assigned to schools so how many teachers per staff member are we assigning we're looking at that at all of our levels as well as central office and how staff is allocated at central office um, and then we're also working on opportunities to increase student enrollment. Um, so we've been, in, we, our marketing, or not marketing director, our uh, director of communication position has been vacant since September, October. Um, and we've been, and so we haven't been able to find a qualified person. So instead of, um, we've taken that money that we would have paid for a salary to allocate that to work with a marketing um, company and PR company to help us create a, a campaign to help try to increase our enrollment. Uh, next slide, please. We did some deeper analysis on capacity. Um, so looked at our current enrollment at every school, and then we also pulled um, the last facility study that was done district-wide for each building, 
And from the facility studies, we pulled the DPI standard capacity for every school with the exception of Asheville High School. Um, so what we looked at is what capacity was reported in that last assessment, looked at current enrollment, and then we were able to determine how many potential seats are open at each facility. Um, so you'll see that there. Um, I also wanted to highlight that um, at the Haywood campus where the old primary school was, as well as central office, these are two buildings that are no longer coded as schools under um, the fire code. In order for them to reopen as schools, they both would have to undergo significant um, upgrades to meet code because they're not categorized as a school. Um, because they're categorized as office space, in order to reopen them as schools, we do have to bring them up to current code at each facility um, if we want to reopen those as, as schools. Um, also at the Haywood campus, we are in a um, looking at a feasibility study with Buncombe County. Um, the initial meetings have happened and we are gonna meet next week with the architects to look at what they were able to put together um, for various opportunities to put different programming at that facility. So that is to be determined. Um, we dug deeper into identifying maybe of all these options, what are some tenable options? Um, we knew that we wanted to definitely lift and provide space for the critical needs of programming and expansion of the Education and Career Academy. Um, we also identified that there were two elementary schools to explore for a K-8 option if we wanted to try to create a K-8 option along with Montfort. Um, and including Montfort with that um, K-8 organization. Um, however, both of those elementary schools are not set up to um, accommodate students in middle grades. Um, so there would have to be some um, updating of accommodations there. Um, and we determined that downsizing elementary schools was not tenable um, at this moment, um, especially because we also are looking at um, expansive administrative work. We have uh, massive facility renovations going on at Lucy S. Herring coming up in the fall. Um, so we may have to just find some ways to shuffle those around already. Um, also, we need to make sure that we're identifying what it means to be good financial stewards so that we can ensure the long-term sustainability for Asheville City Schools, and then also ensuring that we have an equitable learning environment for all students. Um, so as we dug deeper into the middle school configuration, um, what we were able to see is that it impacted fewer students overall. Uh, we felt that we were able to work and manage um, the work to reconfigure those schools if that is the decision of the board. And then also reconfiguring middle schools provided an opportunity for enhanced programming for our ECA and supporting those students who need that additional support. Um, and it also was meeting that financial stewardship by reducing some cost. Um, we also are evaluating our staffing options and allotments. So I've been working with principals to review their staffing allotments, a new formula that will make things transparent and um, it will allow us to really plan forward as we monitor enrollment. Um, and then we are also looking at central office staffing. So looking at how we might review and determine which positions at central office could be um, based at schools or eliminated. Um, and then as I mentioned, we are working on the marketing campaign um, to work on increasing our student enrollment with updated videos, billboards, flyers, web pages, and mailers. So the middle school um, options that are currently under consideration, um, first of all, al always examining, keeping things the status quo. So keeping what we currently have, that is an option and exploring the pros and cons to this current configuration. Um, another option that identified as tenable was moving Montfort into another site, as I mentioned, possibly moving it into an elementary school or into and share campus, share the campus space with Asheville Middle School. And then the third option was taking both schools, transitioning from two schools down to one. Um, so the middle school timeline that we've identified, um, we started, um, we've been doing this work for a while and kind of uh, identifying what the needs are and why we're at this certain uh, why we're at this point where we have to look at downsizing um, our school facilities um, because of decreasing enrollment. Uh, so we did the initial study presentation last Monday. We have two public hearings, one which is to obviously today and another one next Tuesday. Um, we will update the study and represent that to the board at the March 4th work session and then do a final study presented to the board and they will take a vote um, on March 11th. 
Um, so there's opportunities for people to stay informed as well as sharing your thoughts and feedback. Um, and those are all available on our website. That concludes that um, summary of the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Furman. Uh, any questions or comments from board members? All right. So next on the agenda, we're really um, excited for these next two items. We're going to hear presentations first from uh, the PTO of Asheville Middle School. And then following them, we'll have the PTO from Montford North Star. Good afternoon, members of the board. Uh, we want to express our gratitude for the opportunity of participating in this vital discussion. As a mother of an Asheville Middle School student and current PTO president, I'm very invested on the outcome of the reconfig reconfig reconfiguration. Uh, as an administrator at AB Tech Community College, I also recognize the significance of decisions aimed at addressing um, budgetary concerns. And I understand the imperative to enhance um, the financial standing of our school system so we can achieve a sustainable future. However, I sincerely hope that you will take our feedback into consideration. Uh, we will begin our presentation with some highlights regarding what we love about our school, and we'll finish with a presentation on our thoughts regarding configuration. Hi, I'm Jennifer Doherty. I have been teaching at AMS since 2005. As a student teacher there, um, a tutor there, it's always been very near and dear to my heart. And so I'd like to share a little bit about what we love specifically about our teachers and our students. Um, there's some items up on the screen that tell you what we love, but my favorite thing about our students is our advocacy. Their self-advocacy, we like to encourage that. The ladies that you see in that picture notice a disparity in who had access to period products and that it was not equal. So they decided to stop that from being an issue. They created with, they, with some support from some teachers, they created a project. They now, we now have a budget account or a budget line that covers this and it's, so all the period products are in every single bathroom. No child ever has to ask. Um, it is in both the regular student bathrooms as well as bathrooms that support our transgendered students as well. One of the things, uh, obviously I've seen a lot of staff, but one of the things I've always loved about our staff is that in our school, every child that walks in our building is our student. It is not the kids that are in our class. Yes, they are our students, but every student is our student. We encourage the kids to get to know the teachers, not on their grade level. Um, I have several kids that visit me that they they won't have me for another two years, but they're forming a relationship now. And the nice thing about that is that means that every kid in Asheville Middle School has a person. When they need somewhere to go, when they start to feel a little confused or stressed, they have someone that they can go to. Um, our staff is also very good at creating a very student-centered learning space. And it's basically the idea is what can, what can we do as facilitators, not just teachers? So obviously we love our new building. Those of us that know the old building know probably why we love the new building. Um, one of the things I love about this building is that it has many communal spaces for the students to collaborate. Um, there are th there's a kitchen on every single grade level. One of them is being used by a class, but the other two are available. Um, there are labs on every single grade level. There's some ecology things going on. Each team has a pod where kids can get together and collaborate on projects. So um, We are a community-centered school. Asheville Middle has always been a school that's based on the Asheville community. We have lots of students that participate in that. Former students come back, they teach, they uh, tutor, they come to community night. We have 
man things like mana pop up our parents and families that need that if you need a service we will find a way to get it to you uh, we have a community school coordinator on campus we have you know we've got united way on campus there's a cooler closet there are lots of things basically we don't want family needs to become an obstacle to family opportunity and learning so i'm going to let miss muir take over from here yeah. hi i'm leslie muir i'm a sixth grade english teacher at uh, the Asheville Middle School, I got there in November. Um, and I'm also the proud parent of four children. The oldest of two uh, went to Asheville Middle when it was the old brick building. I have a seventh grader there now who came from Isaac Dixon, and also a fourth grader at Isaac Dixon that in a few years will be uh, coming to Asheville Middle. Um, the media center is almost the heart of the school. It's, it's central. When you come in, you see the media center right away. Um, you might get distracted by, by the guinea pig that we have initially in the window. But the media center is there, it's beautiful. There's tons of books. Um, our librarians are fantastic offering all kinds of tech-based uh, lessons, book fair collaborations with teachers. Um, I bring my class down every other week and they have presentations for us to get the kids more acquainted with the offerings in the library. And it's just a beautiful uh, place for meetings as well. Um, that's also used by the community. We have community groups that go into the library as well after hours and use that space too. Um, we have tons of elective offerings. Um, you can see the list up here. Um, AVID is a program that was started years ago for um, kids that are wanting to go to college that might need some extra support in kind of getting there and kind of thinking about what, what all that entails. Um, and computer, robotics, uh, nutrition, wellness, visual arts, Spanish, <laughs> chorus, band, jazz. I mean, there's something, as you can see from the list, there's something for everybody. And uh, I never hear the students you know, ever complain about their electives. They get very excited about trying them all out and actually trying to figure out and decide what they're gonna take. Um, we, have ton you know, we have all these musical ensembles as well. We have strings, we have the jazz band, we have concert band. Lots of sixth graders upon coming to Asheville Middle initially try out for the band. My second son actually started playing trumpet at Asheville Middle. He's about to graduate uh, with, a, with a master's in music performance from Juilliard this May. Um, jazz band is something that a lot of kids participate in. My daughter plays it on trumpet. Also plays the trumpet in the jazz band. Um, and I think that's all. We have Padea. Padea is a great, it's a, it's a seminar series that right now is going on. It takes a week long. We have a couple of days where we prep the students about what we're going to be talking about. We're talking about Malcolm X this week, um, about how he learned to read and write in jail and his, his way of doing that. Um, in the middle of the week, um, we get into writing about what we've been reading about. But it's a chance we sit in circles like this in seminar. We don't raise hands. We just talk and respond. experience um, what more we love um, again at um, college and career readiness program for students it's been there since 1999 um, we by the way have been on that situs since 1965 becoming a middle school in 1969 on the situs where we are now um, avid again most students will um, lots of um, interfacing with universities and tutors um, from UNSA that come, really great college kids as well. I've sat in on some classes and it's a marvel. Um, kids that aren't excited about raising their hand ordinarily are like dashing to go to the board to write stuff down. It's wonderful. Um, traditions, we've got friends. Um, we've got a capstone trip that's coming up uh, in the spring to go to Washington DC for our eighth graders. Um, education trips, we have visiting artists from the community come in um, and from um, Spirit Week, uh, everybody likes to wear their pajamas, teachers can too, it's great fun. Um, we have uh, our turkey trot run, um, eighth grade picnic field day, um, you know, all kinds of great uh, traditions that the students get really excited about and they know about. As a new teacher, I can say, hey, what is this, what is this pep rally gonna look like? And the kids are like, oh, it's gonna be like this. Um, extracurriculars, again, um, we've got lots of those as well. Uh, the National Junior Honor Society, speech and debate um, has been a great one. Uh, math counts. 
You can see up there the Quill Competition Team, 12 uh, Competition Team, Quiz Bowl, Edison Pitch Contest, Battle of the Books. A Battle of the Books, we, we won that one. I think Edison Pitch has done really well too, Quiz Bowl as well. Success with the kids in these groups that have gone on to bring honor back to uh, AMS. Um, home of Cougar Athletes. Um, again, we've got tons of sports here uh, that I know that people from Montford can come and join in on. Everything from football to soccer to tennis to baseball to golf, um, cheer, everything in between. Um, and rushing through that, there's a lot more to say, but in consideration of time, I cede the balance. Thank you. So as you can witness, there's a lot of stuff. Um, Asheville Middle School, we're very proud of our school. Uh, what, when it comes to the uh, um, following, career soldier on for six and eight students we understand that um, the importance of these students having their own space and we actually think that there are some students at Asheville Middle School that could benefit from having you know a school like this that they could attend um, and have better support for their um, when it comes to placing a school within a school, um, we think it's complicated and it's unnecessary. Um, or as we uh, mentioned before, we have a beautiful building. It was um, built uh, with the idea when it, when it was designed on each grade to have their own floor. It's important for um, parents that students are able to have their own space. Um, what, that was one of the considerations I made when I registered my daughter. I didn't want her to go to a big school. She was so excited about, but for me as a parent, that was very like a concern being so big. So when she went there and we noticed that she was pretty much gonna be interacting just with sixth graders, it just was, I was at ease. It, it helped me a lot. So if we were to put both schools together, that means that some of our students may lose some space and then we will have to, you know, I think that that draw that people have, you know, towards actual middle school because they feel like, well, it's big, but at least they have their own floor will be lost. Uh, we also are concerned about the disrupt in the current structure. And another of our concern is possible conflicts that could happen um, with, you know, different administrative challenges. So let's say um, an after school, you know, or like elective, if, if electives are being taken by the same, different, like same students, but at different schools, or there be a conflict between some students, one for one school, one for the other, who will be the one dealing with that? Will that be the teachers from AMS, will be the teachers from Mumford? So those kinds of conflicts um, pose a concern for us. Um, we strongly believe that there is no need to create a new school. Um, we think that unnecessary should be prevented if well, and additionally, more positive outcome, for sure, whether, you know, um, having, whether it's practical to have the two schools and create a whole new one. Why to recreate the will when we have such great things already? Um, and lastly, we want to um, welcome um, um, the families, um, staff, it's need for us to express that we want to welcome for academy. We know that change it's scary. We know that um, sometimes things happen when, you know, because of financial situations, we have to make those changes. But we want you all to know that we're here to support you and guide you through this process. We really want you to be part of our family if it comes to that. We have here. And we just wanted, we love this. Um, Thank you. Thank you again to the AMS PTO, and now we'll have Montford North Star PTO. Hi there. Um, I'm Sarah Armstrong. I'm the current Montford North Star PTO president. Uh, in a past life, I was the seventh grade ELA teacher at Montford North Star for four years. I currently have a seventh grade daughter at Montford North Star and a fourth grade son in our elementary school system. So we just are so grateful for the opportunity to present a little bit about 
school and our thoughts on these potential um, consolidation options. Uh, I'd like to start out by pointing out that we fully agree with a lot of the points made in Dr. Furman's information. Um, there is absolutely a financial issue looming over our district that we feel like needs some pretty immediate attention. Um, we fully agree that ECA needs a home. Um, our questioning is why the Montford North Star Academy building is potentially the only option on the table. Um, I do want to say thank you for including in the slides today information about the Haywood Street campus and about this campus here. I know there have been a lot of community questions about that. Um, I do have more questions now potentially about um, how, how much would it cost to get one of those buildings up to code? Um, what would it cost as we're renovating that Haywood Street campus to make that a place for ECA that could potentially be built specifically for that program and their needs? Um, but first, I want to take a moment just to brag on our Montford North Star Academy students and staff. Um, I'm going to take every opportunity possible to shout their achievements from the rooftop every single time because our students and our staff are really, really amazing. Um, first, we can talk about some of the amazing data coming out of our school. Montford North Star has met or exceeded growth for the past three years. Montford North Star is growing students at a higher rate than other schools in the district in regards to our subgroups, our economically disadvantaged students, our students of color. And we're one of, I think, only two schools who are actively closing the achievement gap between our black students and our white students. Not that we don't have a lot of progress left to make in this district. We have consistently met or exceeded growth on the North Carolina report card. We just got nominated and chosen to be a school to watch by the North Carolina Association of Middle Level Education, which is a national award. Our administrator will be going to Washington, D.C. this summer to collect this very prestigious award that our school has earned. I think it's important to note the criteria that were met in order for our school to get this really amazing award. Um, academic excellence. Our school is academically excellent. It challenges all students to use their minds well. It is developmentally responsive. The school is sensitive to the unique developmental challenges of early adolescence. It is socially equitable. The school is socially equitable, democratic, and fair. It provides students with high quality teachers, resources, and learning opportunities and supports. It also has a learning organization that establishes norms, structures, and organizational arrangements to support and sustain the trajectory toward excellence. Montford North Star is award-winning. Just this year, Principal Shannon Baggett was the Asheville City Schools Principal of the Year. Our Science Olympiad team consistently brings home uh, awards uh, since our inception, right, Coach Ross? Since 2021, woo! We just brought home some big awards. Of course, we have students in the band program at Montford North Star who consistently qualify for honors band. They are state eligible students representing the Asheville City Schools band program. And we were the 2023 Battle of the Books District Championships. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Montford PTO wants to make it clear that Asheville City Schools deserves options at every level, including elementary, middle, and high school. Our school is in demand. Every year we have out-of-district students. Every year the school is either fully or nearly fully enrolled. I'd like to take a moment to address the charge that Dr. Furman put out um, in last Monday's meeting and addressed again. The first being the ACS Board of Education charged superintendent and the administrative team to assess the feasibility of consolidation of a school as a means of improving academic effectiveness. When the board and Dr. Furman laid out all of the options in last Monday's meeting of the advantages and the challenges of these options. Um, academic effectiveness was not included in any of those advantages or hardships um, in any of the options under consideration. We would like a little bit more information um, because that is one of the main objectives of this consolidation and that was conspicuously missing. We would like to know how this will affect the academic achievements of our middle schoolers. We would like to know a little bit more about the operational efficiencies that have been explored, particularly at Central Office. We appreciate that Dr. Furman says that is being investigated, but we'd like a little bit more information about that. And in terms of the long-term financial stability, the proposed options feel short-sighted and pose significant unintended consequences based on the trade-offs that will be realized. For a district that very much needs transparency and to build trust, we need a validated cost-benefit analysis that highlights the opportunity cost of all suggested options. 
Concurrently, one of the primary goals of the board is to determine where space can be found in ACS facilities. We absolutely agree to this need. ECA needs a home. Harm has been done to that program, but we want to make sure that all options are being explored, not just Montford North Star. Um, as stated in the slide, there is about 30,000 square feet of space in this building alone um, that could be investigated for a potential home for ECA. This used to be a school. We're curious what that would take to become a school once again. We also agree that we need to provide programming to meet the diverse needs of students when traditional school is not a match for their needs, and we believe that is true for all Asheville City School students. Providing a space for ECA to grow while maintaining options across elementary, middle, and high school is critical as different students have different needs. A little bit about the potential impacts of consolidation. Studies have shown that there are social impacts of consolidation. At a community level, there is strain on the family and political conflicts. At the school level, leaders and staff require additional resources and training to be effectively welcoming and support these displaced students. At the school level, we'll need to build a cohesive school culture, which takes time. And at the student level, displaced students' friendships suffer. They can also experience stereotyping at the new school. In terms of academic impacts of consolidation, research shows that unless displaced students are merging into a better performing school, there are long-term negative impacts on the displaced students. In some cases, students at schools receiving an influx of displaced students also experience a decline. I'd like to point out, it feels sometimes like Montford students are viewed as just a small percentage of our middle school population. Montford North Star Academy students make up about 30% of Asheville City Schools middle school population. It's a pretty huge number of students to displace. In terms of academic performance, if we're talking about consolidating Montford North Star Academy into Asheville Middle School, it's important to note that 64.8% of Montford students are at grade level in all subjects which is about 80, puts about above 80% of students in our state. In terms of academic performance for our students of color, Montford North Star is consistently high, scoring higher than other schools in our district. And in terms of closing that achievement gap, Montford North Star is one of two schools for whom the achievement gap is shrinking. So our question is why we are focusing on the middle school level specifically. If we're looking at enrollment data, 2017, our elementary school first month attendance has declined about 26%. In that same time, charter school attendance has increased about 46%. From 2017 to present day, the middle school attendance and enrollment has stayed pretty much the same across the board. Montford North Star has experienced 92 to 95% attendance since full staffing in 2019. Some numbers to compare. While yes, Asheville Middle School did have a dip in enrollment for the 2023 school year. You can see that enrollment at the middle school level has stayed relatively stable since 2019. We would like to address the enrollment and capacity information that has been put out by our district. Um, currently, the numbers that we have for capacity feel absolutely inaccurate. Um, I know there's a new capacity study being done by the district. We would like to wait until we have that information before we make any decisions. It feels short-sighted to make decisions on faulty numbers. For example, um, in this capacity study that we currently have, it says that Asheville Middle School, with a, a square footage over 150,000 square feet, has room for 1,000 students. Montford North Star, at less than a third of that, has room for 765. Um, the numbers just, they feel like they don't make sense. And if they, So we would, we would very much like accurate capacity numbers before making a decision based on capacity. Um, in reality, um, it has been expressed before by the board that Montford North Star was fully enrolled at a 2021 board meeting when we had 240 students. We were considered fully enrolled by the board. Um, in actuality, it's been said that maybe we have capacity for 292 students. If we use that number, 292, Right now, Montford North Star is at over 74% capacity, which is the second highest in our district. So this is the chart put out by Mountain X based on capacity numbers provided by the board. Um, not accurate capacity numbers. The number for Montford should be a lot higher toward, toward up the top where that arrow is. Um, so just reiterating, we are the second highest at capacity in the district. Um, 
please note that if there is a consolidation of the two schools, there's an increased risk of declining Asheville City Schools enrollment. Um, we lost the most ACS students first when Asheville City Schools closed Asheville Primary School, and second when a charter school, Mountain City Public Montessori, moved in to take over the Montessori market um, in Asheville City Schools was the, the second largest amount of students we've lost to charter schools. Um, Montford North Star put out a very unofficial Google form survey because this felt like important information. It simply asked two questions to current Montford North Star parents. If Montford North Star Academy consolidates, will you send your kid to AMS? Um, the data we got back, 131 responses, only 13% of parents said unequivocally, yes, we will send our kid to Asheville Middle School. These were the, res the responses from those folks who said they would choose not to go to Asheville Middle. It's important to note that if per pupil spending in Asheville City Schools is roughly $14,000 per student, if even half of our unsure responses decide to leave our district, as well as those no responses, that's a loss of over $1.2 million just in enrollment. So please, 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 we want to express like how many students we will lose if we close Montford North Star Academy. Um, there's anecdotal data that came from this also. There was an option for parents to comment about making the choices they were making. Um, I sent all this to the board already, so I, I really encourage you to look through it. Um, we also risk a loss of amazingly talented, brilliant teacher, teachers at Montford North Star. Um, the teachers at Montford North Star Academy chose to work at Montford North Star Academy. They chose it because it is a small STEAM project-based learning school. Asheville Middle School is an amazing school with amazing educators who signed up to work at Asheville Middle School. Montford North Star Academy teachers signed up to work at Montford North Star Academy. And the risk of losing these teachers is vast. These teachers um, have proven their high academic performance and growth. They are valuable assets to any school in our area. Um, we have already lost an unprecedented number of teachers in this district. We are, I think, the, some of the, maybe not the exact words, but something like a staffing crisis. We are having a crisis with getting amazing teachers in our district. Um, and this is just another opportunity to lose more stellar teachers. Um, we hope that you will consider hitting the pause button. It feels like we need more information in order to get everything we need for these three goals. Academic effectiveness, operational efficiency, and long-term financial stability. There are still questions. We still do not have accurate capacity numbers. We would like to explore the other options on the table and not be constrained by timelines and not explore those just because we don't have enough time by the end of the school year to make that happen. So we just really encourage you to hit the pause button and let's make sure we're looking at all of our options first, please. And that's it. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Uh, next, we'll move to um, our public comment. And so those of you who have paid attention to board meetings, you know that the chair has to give a full kind of dialogue about the guidelines for public comment. So forgive me this, this moment as I do that. The Board of Education greatly appreciates your interest in the Asheville City Schools, and we welcome your comments to the board. Please, mi please be mindful of the following guidelines per policy 2310. Unless otherwise approved by the board, the total time for public comment shall not exceed 30 minutes, but I think we're going to uh, we'll probably will be a motion to extend the time for everyone who's on the list, but we'll get to that in a moment. Members of the public may speak for three minutes. The time is indicated by lights directly in front of you. Multiple speakers from a group who are presenting on the same topic may choose to elect one speaker for the group. If a single speaker is used by any group, they shall be allocated five minutes instead of the three minutes to address the board. <clears throat> Substitute speakers will not be permitted, and speakers may not donate any portion of their time to another speaker. Please be respectful. A disruption by any person or persons of a public meeting will not be tolerated and can result in removal from the meeting. Incorrect or misleading information presented by a speaker may be responded to at the direction of the chair. 
<clears throat> Confidential student and personnel matters may not be discussed during public comment, and the board does not accept personnel complaints through public comment. Um, <clears throat> Actually, that wasn't as long as I thought it would be. So uh, with that in mind, um, board, I am looking at our list of speakers. I can't guarantee that we'll be under 30 minutes, so I want to see if there's a motion to extend the time for in-person comment. I move that we extend the time. Um, second. Yeah. second. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. So we'll, um, we will start with in-person comment, and then we do have people on virtual, but we'll um, start with in-person. I've got a list of those who you have signed up, and um, we'll just take whatever time we need for those in-person comments. Um, again, when I call your name, just come up to the, um, to the dais, and again, there will be lights in front of you to indicate your time remaining. So we will start uh, with Kate Griffin. And Kate, you'll have three minutes. Yes, sounds good. Hey, everybody. So my name is Kate, and I have a current eighth grader at Montford North Star, and I also have a high schooler who went to Montford North Star. As an elementary school parent, I gave both my kids the option to go where they wanted to go. I understood that was actually advice guidance counselor who said at this age that's really important. I think it's important to empower kids who are leaving elementary school for middle school to give them a choice. So I'm here to say that I didn't know which school my kids were going to choose. They're both very different um, and they both cho chose Montford North Star. Um, I think the two options for middle schools that we have here are wonderful and I don't want to suggest anything different, uh, but I do want to suggest that it's important to have a choice. I think that's really important. And if we look at the numbers that we've been shown today, I think there's enough um, skepticism as well as inaccuracies that we can't move forward with any of the information we have so far. Um, I also come from the art world. Um, I'm in business now, but my brain thinks in an art way. So Brainstorming is the best part of any process, anybody will tell you, in the art world. I don't think we've had nearly enough brainstorming. In fact, at the PTO meeting where I was at Montford North Star just a few there were some really incredible ideas about ways to ra raise money for our school system, and I think that, that hasn't been even scratched. Um, of schools, from what I understand, is really important to look at the math and the data. I'm not a math person, but what I can tell you is big gestures. Uh, what I understand is that the middle schools in the Asheville City School District are, um, are good with enrollment. The high schools are good with enrollment. The elementary schools, however, are, have been down on enrollment. So, and that, that kind of supports it because we have more facilities. So if this is a facility question, we've got kind of a, an area in which the kids can be consolidated. I'm not as concerned about that. Um, also, I'm not as concerned because they're elementary school kids. They're super resilient. Um, just having had one of the worst live, uh, years of my life with my middle school student, one of my kids, I know that this, these three years are so vulnerable for everybody in this room. I mean, think back to middle school. This would be a huge upheaval, um, developmentally, mentally. Um, you know, I don't know how much we want to put on them. I don't think any of us in the room who are parents know the stresses that our kids have been placed under. Um, everything that's gone on from active shooter drills, you know, we could go on and on. So capacity that they can handle in the middle school age is, is getting kind of taxed. It's, get, it's up there. So um, I don't think consolidation is necessarily a welcome thing at any age group, but I am confident that my elementary school kids could have handled it. So I appreciate y'all's really thoughtful um, resilient answers on this. There is no emergency. There's no need to act immediately. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman, we have a car alarm that is going off repeatedly. I don't want someone to go to a burnout battery. Yep. It appears to be a Honda van license. It's gray. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a Honda pilot. That's gray. License plate JFW8108. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks, April. Yep. Uh, next up, we have uh, Adrian Bernardi. And Adrian, you have three minutes. Good evening. I am the proud parent of a blended Asheville Cougar family. In 2014, my two oldest started elementary school at Lucy Herring and Isaac Dixon. From there, they both moved on to Asheville Middle School because that was their best fit based on the elective options there, as well as the AVID program. They're now each at Asheville High and Sulsa, respectively. My youngest chose Montford North Star based on her desire for project-based learning and the STEM program. Maintaining options in Asheville City Schools for elementary, middle, and high school is truly the best way to attract and retain students. The board's objectives to improve academic effectiveness, operational efficiencies, um, and long-term financial sustainability, all while finding a space within an Asheville City School facility for the Education and Career Academy are clear. Uh, providing programming to meet the diverse needs of all students um, rings true across our ACS community. It is imperative that the board pause pursuing middle school reconfiguration for the following reasons. The first is academic effectiveness. Um, it was not included in any of the advantages or hardships outlined in the tenable options and consideration, in spite of clear evidence. Why? The board has not demonstrated exploring operational efficiencies here at central office, um, including uh, placing ECA at 85 Mountain Street. I was glad to see that you added it um, as an ACS facility that will be looking at capacity studies, so thank you for that. Um, but the proposed tenable options, truly they are short-sighted and they pose significant unintended consequences that truly threaten the financial sustainability for the district. 90 Montford Avenue is not the only option for the ECA program. Consolidation options should, again, include this beautiful 30,000 plus square foot space um, here where central office is housed and transparency across staffing for all departments, including HR, finance, administration, needs to be assessed. Middle school reconfiguration impacts more students and staff, not less. This is opposite of what you all have stated. How has the district considered the impacts to teaching, teacher working conditions, the propensity for attrition, student disruption, um, all while dismantling a high performing school? As a board, you have oversimplified that reconfiguration work is manageable. Thank you for your time, and I hope you will hit the pause button. Thank you. Uh, next up is Sharon Napier. And Sharon, you'll have three minutes. Okay, thank you for having me today. We appreciate it. My name is Dr. Sharon Napier. I have one child at Montford North Star, and I have twins at Claxton, and I'm also an Asheville High graduate. <laughs> okay, I'm going to provide four quick points. I'm going to sound like an auctioneer, but I have three minutes, so I'm going to talk about MNSA's successes, talent retention, educational continuity, and finances. So demonstrated successes, we've heard um, from Sarah uh, that Mumford was no nominated as a 2024 school to watch and is award winning. These accolades serve as evidence that the project-based learning model is effective, which can attract families to the school system. Two, talent retention. Our staff accepted employment at Mumford North Star with the understanding that they were building focused, a focused STEAM school. High achieving schools like Montford North Star not only attract, but also retain highly qualified and engaging teachers. Closing the school could disperse this talent, depriving the school district of experienced educators who contribute to the overall ed quality of education within our system. I'm also gonna add that ACS has a history of retaining strong teachers, at least in the 90s and the early 2000s. I've gone to a number of schools of higher learning and frequently tell people that my strongest and most impactful teachers were at Asheville High and many of my cohort agree. 
Unfortunately, teacher attrition is currently an issue at ACS, and we need to make an effort to keep our strong teachers here and feeling supported. Third, uh, educational continuity, staying in the same school. So research shows that educational continuity is important for both long-term academic achievement and emotional well-being. For families impacted by the closure of Asheville Primary School, current middle schoolers have been in three different schools in three years. If moved to AMS, that would be four schools in four years. Add the COVID pandemic, that makes it five to six years where these students have not been provided the educational continuity that they deserve. I worry that ACS is actually failing these particular students and these families. And as Sarah mentioned, consolidating schools would displace about 30% of our middle school students, putting them at risk for long-term negative impacts. Okay, finally, finances. Cutting costs by closing schools may offer short-term financial relief, but the long-term gains are unclear right now. Looking at the alternatives presented, alternative, the alternative of moving Montford North Star to AMS, it saves about $311,000. Uh, assuming one student is equivalent to about 14,000 in ACS funding, that's what I heard earlier tonight, based on Sarah's initial survey data, it's possible this alternative is just going to be a wash because we might lose that many students, about 22, leaving the school system. Also, consolidating Montford North Star into AMS saves about $1.5 to $2 million, and that's roughly about 107 to 142 students, which does seem like a lot, but just in the last year, according to data we received from the PTO last week, AMS lost 84 students in just the last year. Over the last five years, Montford North Star enrollment has remained consistent and with a wait list. So this does beg the question, will this possible reconfiguration really address underlying financial issues, given that we may likely continue to see a decrease in enrollment in ACS? Was that button the end? Yes. That that okay. Yes, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Hit the pause button. Thank you. Uh, next is Kelly Saunders. And Kelly, you'll have three minutes. I was wondering where the time was. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Hi, I'm Kelly Saunders, and I teach band at Mumford North Star Academy. Um, I feel like a lot of my own thoughts and feelings were um, already gone over, which I do appreciate by the MNSA PTO. Um, but I wanted to say today that it appears that there are two major concerns from what I'm reading based off of what was presented. Financial stability and e e re I'm sorry, relocating the ECA. So since the ECA's lease is not continuing next year and we have to find a new location to house them, I think the following information should be researched and shared. We need to know the current needs to properly house the current ECA, the number of students, the number of classrooms, the number of faculty and any additional needs so that you can find a good place for them to fit currently. Uh, we also need to have that same information provided to, to for projected needs. So you say you want to expand it, so we also need to look at what would those projected needs be. I also think it'd be good to look at the history of the alternative school so that we can assess what worked and what didn't. These data points are absolutely necessary to determine how we can effectively move forward and make sound decision for our future. Another set of data that will help guide this decision is ACS enrollment, not just middle school ACS enrollment. The projected enrollment is helpful, um, but analyzing our past enrollment is crucial to understanding our trends. I dove deeper into the middle school enrollment, enrollment data that was provided and found that the estimated percentage of middle school in the total ACS enrollment has increased since 2014. In the 2014-15 school year, the percentage of middle school uh, enrollment was about 16.7%. Since MNSA opened, that trend has gone upward, and it is now currently at 19%. So again, middle school is doing well and is reaching the enrollment that it needs. So where are the largest enrollment decreases? That's where we need to look in our data. Once we assess our past enrollment, we can use that data to see where we need to bridge the gap or where, where, where do we need to target um, our enrollment issues. Um, I can say that Mumford is making a difference for our students. We consistently help our students meet expected growth. People choose to attend our school because it is a better fit for them. I have two very young children. One is um, gonna go into kindergarten next year. And um, I already picked a school for him and he is so different than my other younger child. And I could see each of these two schools being a good fit for both of my children. I know there's multiple families who have students in both. So a choice is important. 
The biggest thing I need to say tonight is that making any decision requires being thoroughly thought out with a plan in place. I have not seen a plan to ensure that this decision will be successful and bring the expected changes, which has already been outlined, improving academic effectiveness, operational efficiency, long-term financial stability, and expansion of the ECA. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have David Rogers. And David, you'll have three minutes. Thank you. Astral City School Board members and superintendent, thank you for allowing us to speak tonight. My hope is that you push the pause button on the merger of our schools. This is moving too fast. It doesn't feel like you're considering all options for saving money when focused only on the closure of Montford North Star Academy. There are other big ticket ways that you can save money, such as merging elementary schools, closing the central office, maybe merging SILSA and Asheville High. Shouldn't all big ticket op options be reviewed simultaneously if we want to make the best decision? How is looking just at closing Montford the chosen path forward here? Please hit the pause button. Is 60 days adequate engagement with parents and staff for such a big decision? We were just notified January 9th of a stakeholder engagement session and then happening on January 18th for a potential middle school reconfiguration. At last week's meeting, Superintendent Furman stated in hour three, minute 17 of the YouTube recording, March 11th will be the finalized study presented to our board for approval. Tonight, the chair started the meeting with, we are discussing the Asheville Middle School reconfiguration. Not a proposal. I say again, you said tonight, we are discussing the Asheville Middle School reconfiguration. Please hit the pause button. When things are stated like this, it seems pretty clear that the path forward is getting rid of Montford North Star. What is the rush to do this in less than 60 days? Really, what is the rush at looking at only one option to save money? It's clear you all need to consider all of the options. The system is in dire financial straits. Please put all the options on the table. What engagement is being done with AMS parents and parents of fifth graders going to middle school next year? Shouldn't they be a part of the conversation too? Families who toured the middle school saw differences. They made their choices of which is the best school for their children. Are you okay with pulling the rug out from underneath all of these folks? My guess is there will be lots of ticked off parents if you move forward with this plan, especially if you don't discuss this with the current fifth grade families and ask for their thoughts. They need to know the class sizes will be increased based on the superintendent's data from last week. This year, the seventh grade core teacher student ratio is one to 17 using her data. At AMS next year, according to her data, it'll be one to 24. Please push the pause button. Consider other options to save money. The, the facility here in this building is more than 30,000 square feet. It could be repurposed. Please hit the pause button. 60 days to present and execute a plan without considering other options is really doing the community a disservice. Again, please, please, please. Hit the pause button. Thank you. Uh, next up is Sandra News. And Sandra, you have three minutes. So my name is Sandra Newis, and I am uh, the parent of a seventh grader at Montford North Star and a fifth grader who's um, also slated to go there. I'm also a psychologist, um, and I spent about 15 years working in adolescent mental health, specifically with middle schoolers. And I have seen exactly what happens for middle schoolers who are faced with being uprooted, who are faced with being in a school that didn't meet their needs, who are faced with a lack of community, who might be faced with a lack of belonging. And I have seen what happens firsthand when parents are faced with these kinds of decisions because it puts our kids at risk. And I really want to speak to this piece from the heart. Are you really willing to put 30% of our middle schoolers at risk? My kids love this school. 
And I am associated with lots of parents who are people who have the capacity to move outside of the district. I will be one of them if I can make that happen. And there are a lot of us standing there. Monford is a great school. Why would you take a school that is working and break it up? I'm sure, Ma I'm sure AMS is great too, but Monford is really good. I'm thrilled to have my kids go there. My kids are thrilled to be there. Right? No, but you wouldn't know this by looking at them. They're A students, they're white kids, they're not kids of color, but they are at risk. We are a split household and having those extra eyes on them is so important to be in that small situation where the, the teachers know them, right? Where the school is small. My kids need that project-based learning. They need that to be engaged. And I feel really, really strongly that this particular environment is exactly right. And if we as parents have that choice removed from us, you are going to see a lot of people leave the district because we have a lot of options now for other middle schools. There's a lot of them. So why would we not use them? So I want to speak to that piece about the willingness to put 30% of the students at risk right, with the consolidation, the willingness to break up a situation that is working really well amongst the best in the district. Can we not leave that alone and let that continue to thrive and potentially grow and actually draw eyes to the district, right? Can we not allow our children and our families that have chosen to make that choice to thrive at this school to continue to work with this choice in the way that we want to? I have seen this. I know what can happen. If you put 30% of the kids at risk and those things that Sarah talked about have the potential to happen, academic decline, being marginalized, not fitting in and belonging, is that, that there are some kids that are going to tank under those situations. I've seen it. I know what can happen. This is the most vulnerable time in our kids' lives. So please just leave it as it is and explore other options. There are, uh, there are other options available to us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Robert Cork. Robert, you have three minutes. Great, thanks. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, my name's Robert Cork. I've got a fifth grader at Ira B. Jones and hope to have a North Star student next year. Providing public comment through a forum like this is something I've never done before, but felt that it was really important in a case like this, as the decision before the board is going to impact these kids throughout the rest of their lives. I'm less prepared than many of those speaking before because I've really only got engaged in this in the last week since we just recently made our selection to choose our North Star for our schooling next year. My passion and advocacy for public schools comes from going through the public school system in Australia where I went through a middle school of only 100 kids, uh, now raising a fifth grader through Ira B. Jones, um, and then looking forward to the opportunities provided by North Star next year. While both middle schools clearly offer amazing opportunities, the experiences will be different for each of the kids. Uh, I think we can all agree that it's not a one-size-fits-all when it comes to schooling for our children. My wife, daughter, and I think that Asheville, um, that Monford North Star is going to be the best fit for her, but it may not be for our preschooler as he moves up through the grades as well. As an Asheville taxpayer for nine years and as an engineering consultant here in town, I certainly understand working through budgetary constraints. I also really well understand the process of working through a feasibility study and comparing all the options side by side once you have everything in place. Uh, prior to making any cuts, we need to look at all the options that you're considering and we need to have all the facts in place. Uh, as I've experienced with our years at IRB Jones, uh, the Asheville community is incredibly engaged um, and could support implementation of whatever final decisions are needed to make for the whole community, um, rather than looking down the barrel of having to uh, look at alternative out-of-district options. I ask that you please postpone this decision making until you can work through your whole feasibility assessment and put all the options on the table. Um, we need to allow a process that allows families to make their decisions about the future and they need some more options. Thanks very much for hearing us all tonight. Good luck with your decisions.
Thank you. Next, we have John Brigham. And John, you'll have three minutes. You hear me? Okay, um, um, I'm from the outside. I have like a cold calculated uh, um, objective interpretation, and I appreciate your I appreciate your attention. You have fifty middle schools. Some of them are good, and some of them are bad. You take all the all the middle schools that are good, and you look at them real closely, and you realize they're all the same. And you look at inside of the middle school, and you find that they're full of teachers and kids in classrooms. No bells, no whistles, no special programs. Okay, there's just kids, teachers, and classrooms. That's what it takes to make a school. No special programs. Okay, addressing the Monford parents. So you have a special kid. Everybody knows that. You have a special kid and you come to the Asheville City Schools and you go, oh no, what am I gonna do? Wait a minute, you can go to Monford North Star. Monford North Star Academy, a special program for special kids, okay? Um, well, the problem is that the, the sixth, seventh, eighth graders over on Monford Avenue should be in the middle school. The middle school needs the Monford kids. The Monford kids need the middle school. And I'm, I'm not asking you to sacrifice your child for the greater good. It's, it's, almost, like, it's almost like an election. The, the, the school board has set this up as an election. Voting for Monford is voting against the school system. The, something that nobody really realizes is that Asheville Middle School is the best middle school in, the, in, in um, Western North Carolina. The Asheville City Schools is that we got to stand up for our, for our school system and we got to stand up for our school board. I think that the Monford, okay, let me, let me move forward with this. Okay, Silsa at Asheville High School. Silsa is like the lame, the crippled dog, mangy crippled dog that wanders around the high, highway and hopes somebody will pet it. The academic muscle in the high school is not in Silsa. It's in the high school, and you don't want your kids in Silsa. Um, and and then let me. I'm I'm done here anyway. And then and then um, to the school board, um, um, you guys didn't create this. So the, the, what I'm saying flat out is that the Monford School never should have been created, and we're in a position to eliminate it altogether. And thank you. And if you clap, I'm going to be insulted, so don't do that. Thank you, John. Uh, next up is Leighton Hauer. Leighton, you'll have three minutes. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for your service on the school board. I can only imagine how much time and energy it must take. I realize that the school district needs to make changes in order to close its annual financial shortfall. And I'm also concerned that the enrollment attrition that would occur if mental closes or merge with AMS isn't fully priced in. Asheville is an eclectic and diverse place. And I think a necessary challenge ACS faces is to provide to the extent it can afford to different options for its student body. Sometimes, in my opinion, ACS did not do this, and the consequences are far-reaching. For instance, when ACS closed Asheville Primary School, it reduced the diversity of public school pedagogy available to its citizens. As a result, there's a new charter Montessori school that in its first year has 100 students. This is its first year. This charter school could exist for generations who are not attending ACS. Whether one of the things closing APS was a good idea or not, the results are relevant to your decision in the coming weeks. I'm concerned that the closing or merger of Mensa could cause an even greater enrollment headwind than we are currently facing and will make the likelihood of more charter schools in our community even stronger. The families who send their kids to Mensa care about their kids having a middle school experience at a smaller school than AMS. This is our environment. One third of the families who send their kids to middle school in ACS want a smaller school and they like Mensa's project-based learning practices. 
when I see the financial projections for closing or merging Mensa, I think one thing they're missing is the projected loss of middle and high school revenue from families who will leave the district at the middle school level if Mensa closes. The closing of APS led immediately to the formation of a charter school and families leaving ACS. It's not clear to me why we would expect a different result if Mensa closes. Further, whether or not a new charter school comes online to fill the market demand, families can simply vote with their feet and enroll in a smaller charter or independent middle school if ACS stops offering that option. I think the greatest um, argument for keeping Mensa open it really is a financial one for the enrollment issues at hand. That gives you more flexibility, um, gives you the, the district greater sustainability. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have Michelle Torino. And Michelle, you'll have five minutes. I'm sorry, three minutes. Sorry, three minutes. <laughs> My bad. Think ahead. Um, hey, everything. Is, can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, I'm not going to look at my notes because everyone has said what I think is important to say. Um, I will say my kid isn't special. He just chose Montford North Star and he's doing really well there. Um, he and my younger son lived through the closing of APS. My kid transferred to Claxton as a fifth grader, had a terrible year. He's a fifth grader. He's already hormonal. Terrible year. Terrible. He came home angry every single day. My little one who transferred into second grade, he's doing fine. He did fine. So maybe there is something to like elementary schools are more resilient. The middle schoolers, they're emotional messes. <sighs> Monford North Scar is succeeding. If you are trying to draw more families to ACS, you do not want your headline to be, come join us at ACS where we close schools that are working. We close schools that are working. And I know it's about dollars and cents. I know it is. The same thing's happening at UNCA. Education seems to be about dollars and cents. We need to balance it with vision. We need to va balance it with our values and believe that by following values, our values of diversity, of diversity, that things will work out. And I know that sounds idealistic. I'm an Asheville hippie, kind of. It's working. The school is working. You'll lose me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at charter schools if you close Mensa. So I'll echo people. Please press pause. Look at other options. ECA does need a home. There has to be another home other than Monford North Star. If you are, if ECA is an alternative school, non-traditional option, Monford North Star is sort of non-traditional. It's another option. Asheville Primary was non-traditional. It was another option. If you're closing these schools that are serving more non-traditional or non-homogenized, whatever they are, learners, then you might need to really grow ECA. You might continue to fail the students. I moved here eight years ago and I heard great things about Asheville City Schools. And since I've lived here, I've just seen every cool thing that's been happening close and shut down. I've seen excellent principals leave. I've seen excellent teachers leave. Dr. Furman, I'm so happy you're here and I hope you'll stay and give our community a chance to like be stable and see what you can do. Positive growth, not shut something down, something down that's working. Give us some stability. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Jennifer Gladden.
And Jennifer, you'll have three minutes. Uh, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to speak. I know that we're all very passionate. We have children that we care about and we are afraid, you know. Um, so we'll try to keep the emotions um, and, you know, kind of, we'll try and keep it, you know, non emotional. But I have three children, three children in Asheville City Schools, all at three different schools. I have a fourth grader at Ira B. Jones, I have a sixth grader at AMS, and I have a sixth grader at Montford North Star. I approached deciding where they were going to go to school in fifth grade, it was about a year ago, and they were looking at the different schools and they were touring the schools. And my one son went to AMS, he loved it. He was like, this school's so awesome. It's, it's this, he loved this beautiful, big, fancy school and he loved it. He knew right away he wanted to go there. And my son, William, he knew right away, walked into Montford and that's, he knew when he went to AMS, he didn't want to go there. He knew, it was, it was too big. He deals with some social anxiety, things like that. And he went into Montford and he loved it and he knew he wanted to go there. And he didn't care about the fancy new options. You know, oftentimes you'll hear a lot of the kids at AMS make fun of the kids at Montford. And I hear it all the time because I deal with having all those kids in and out of my house. And um, they're like, Montford's horrible. They'll talk crap about Montford. I'm like, have you ever actually been there? No, but a friend has, you know, that kind of thing. So that's a frustrating situation. But um, I talked to the counselor at Jones, or actually the, um, Mr. Pruitt, the AIG teacher, and I was like, what is your opinion? They both want to go to different schools. What am I going to do? My ex-husband was like, no way. I'm not driving them to different schools. But Mr. Pruitt was like, the only advice I'll give you, they're both great schools, is listen to your children. Because if you don't listen to them now, and they don't feel like their voice is heard, and they don't get to have a say-so in their future, then they will not be empowered to advocate for, th for themselves later in life. So... I told my ex-husband, I went to battle for my kids. I said, I'm going to stand up for you guys because he was not going to do it. And he was like, finally, I said, you have to let them. How do we know where they want to go to school? They're 12-year-old boys. We have to listen to them. They know where they want to go. And he listened and he agreed. And I can't believe it because he never, never agreed with me. <laughs> so I just knew that. And as soon as we went to school, it has been a bright light. It has been a, such a warm and amazing place for William. Garrison is having a great time at AMS. I will say that this past two years have been really hard to be a public school and an ACS parent. I am a, my sister's a public school teacher, but I have had, my fourth grader has had three different um, social studies and you know, math and science teachers this year. Yeah, and a slew of substitute teachers. My sixth grader at AMS started the school year with no ELA teacher, and then we had a teacher for about two months, and then she resigned, and so then we got a new ELA teacher. Awesome. But if we're going to provide security and consistency for our children, Montford is doing that. So why would you, why would you get rid of that? Thank you. Uh, next, we have Delisha Carpenter. And Delisha, you have three minutes. Thank you. My name is Delisha Carpenter, and I am the mom of a sixth grader at Mofford. I also served as an interim division chair at UNC Chapel Hill for two years. So I understand your need to address this budget issue. As a former chair, I also understand the importance of doing a thorough assessment of options before making a decision as significant as the proposed middle school reconfigurations. Decisions like this should be based on accurate data, meaningfully engage stakeholders, and address the underlying issues. Unfortunately, the current discussion around middle school consolidation meets none of these criteria. First, accurate data have not been collected and relevant stakeholders have not been properly engaged. Up to this point, only one meeting has been held to gather the input of families and only a short eight day lead time was given for that meeting. For those who worked and could not attend, including myself, a survey was distributed to collect their opinions. As someone who completed a dissertation in survey de development, I could tell you that that survey was bad, okay? <laughs> It asked us to rank the reconfiguration options on a scale that ranged from one, least acceptable, to four, least acceptable. 
This is why the quantitative results from that survey could not be presented at the last meeting. They're uninterpretable. And we've already discussed the capacity issue and how that number is likely inaccurate. Second, in regard to developing a solution that addresses the underlying issues, based on your enrollment projections presented at the last school board meeting, we're going to be back here in a year or, year or two to discuss consolidating elementary schools. And we'll be back in three to four years to discuss high schools. Selecting the middle schools as the target for reconfiguration seems short-sighted given the breadth and the scope of enrollment issues. A long-term solution rather than a quick fix is needed. So what can we do to address the shortcomings and how this process has been rolled out? I propose that we work with our local legislative representatives to ask for funding to engage in this process in a thorough, meaningful, and deliberate manner that includes best practices for engaging stakeholders. I've seen entities in Western North Carolina go to the state and successfully ask for money to address major issues affecting their constituents. They've been successful multiple times, and we can to be too. We should specifically ask for money to cover the cost of next year's projected budget shortfall and contract with someone to help us create a long-term, comprehensive plan to address the projected enrollment shortfalls in Asheville. And I say we because all of us will help you educators, students, families, we are here to help you advocate for this funding. So I'm asking the board to please take the time to do this right so we don't have to keep disrupting the lives of our students, families, and educators. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Brad Carpenter. As you can probably well, tell, that was minutes. my better half. Um, so I will not be able to follow up that nearly as well. But um, so, <clears throat> well, I'm a father of a sixth grader as well, uh, and I'm a trained as an engineer. I work with numbers each and every day. And I can usually see when the numbers are not working for some reason or another. And, that, and there's one truism that I've found through my career, and the board will probably soon find out. It's incredibly hard or even impossible to cut your way to a balanced budget without somehow increasing funding at the same time. It just can't be done. <clears throat> I would love to discuss the 2024 future funding expenditure, uh, funding and expenditure by expenditure, where to save money. But the full 2024 budget, I couldn't find. It was nowhere to be found. I found um, a part of a budget. And I tried to compare that to the, the previous years, but it was nearly impossible. But what I could see is the school system has gone from uh, $72 million in revenue in 2021 to 83 in 2022, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, to 86 and a half in 2023. So, but... I don't know what the 2024 budget is, so I can't compare that to where we have been. So, I guess, <clears throat> how can we make future decisions on this budget with other future implications of closing a school without having this information in front of us? <clears throat> However, I can infer that from the 2023 budget that we have about a 5.2% cut from last year. Um, I believe it's impossible, it's possible to cut 5% of expenditures with a serious effort across the board for all schools and programs, including the central office, if you take the time. I challenge the board to make a strong effort to cut costs, not just by closing a school, but cutting it in all areas, including contracts and the central office. Additionally, the entire process here before, sorry. <clears throat> Additionally, the, uh, the entire process we have right now is gonna last about one month from the first board meeting to the meeting uh, where they vote on the closing. It's just not nearly enough time to really evaluate all these expenditures and all the income we, we could actually potentially have. <clears throat> so now we're talking about eliminating a public school, our, our middle school here in Asheville, the only school of choice we have in middle school for Asheville. And honestly, choice is what kept us in the middle school here or the public school here in Asheville. Without this choice, we wouldn't be here tonight. So I believe we're simply moving too fast, sorry, too fast to balance the budget with too little information, too little information, too little effort, 
and with too much on the line for our kids in Monford North Star. And lastly, I'd like to echo, North Carolina is in the bottom 5% for funding uh, education. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Jason Cycle, and I might have mispronounced your last name. I'm sorry, Jason. Oh, did I? Nice. So, Jason, you'll have three minutes. All right, thank you. Um, so many people have spoken to a lot of a lot of the great points. So I'm just going to speak from personal experience. I got a warm, fuzzy feeling actually when I walked to this building. It's been the first time I, I come to this building in, in the last six years. Um, six years ago, we came to. Uh, as new families to Asheville and to enroll in this district. And um, uh, the thing that we enjoyed the most about this district that kind of struck us, because um, we had heard about other people going to charter schools, uh, was that like all the elementary schools were like magnet schools, you could choose. Um, and so we got to go around and uh, view all the, the elementary schools and, and pick which one we thought was the best fit. And um, we thought it was going great. Um, Sorry to say, though, that soon after that, we started to realize we, we, had, um, we have a child who's in third grade now in his kindergarten first grade years. He's had six, six teachers in those two years alone. Um, and that's just kind of, it was destabilizing for him. And for him in particular, for my older child, who's now in sixth grade, it wouldn't have impacted him as much. But for my third grader, it, it had quite a big ordeal. And anyway, so, a couple years go by and we have a choice on choosing middle school and you know we're gonna let our middle schooler make the choice right because like other people said and you know uh, we walked around and me and my my wife's currently at Buncombe uh, County School so she's still teaching I'm a former teacher I taught for nine years in middle school level math and science and uh, we both know what the value of a really good teacher is and what collective teacher efficacy can do for a school and and we we walked into that building and it was it was really warm it was like a hug and um we fell in love and we were like finally you know we can have some stability here you know those teachers they love that school and i feel so good every time i get to go to that school to visit my son who's there right now and and you know if the schools were to consolidate next year i think he would be fine it's my third grader that i'm worried about um, and we're, we're not so sure that without that choice that we, we, we would be able to stay. I mean, we would have to really look at our options or, you know, in two years, a lot could happen and we really go into that building and assess the situation then. But I just wanted to say from, you know, an Asheville city school family, me and my wife, I mean, we're, we're big, big supporters of public school and we really pushed it hard in our neighborhood, but you guys are making it really difficult to advocate you're making it really difficult to advocate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Jessica de Betancourt. And Jessica, you're speaking on behalf of a group? I'm speaking on the behalf of caregivers of elementary age students. Great. And so you have five minutes. Good evening, board and central office leadership. I speak tonight on the behalf of caregivers of elementary age students. I created a survey to gather input from families with young children on how the potential middle school configuration would affect them. Surveys were given out to families at all of the five elementary schools. The first question asked them to check the boxes that best describe their thoughts about what middle school options would, they would like to have for their family. 237 people completed the survey. Of those 237 respondents, 98 said, I'm unsure where my child will attend, but like having two middle school options. 118 said, I will likely choose Montford North Star for middle school. 
117 said, if Monford North Star closes, I may look at options outside of Asheville City Schools for middle school. 22 said, I would likely choose Asheville Middle, but feel it is important for Monford North Star to be an option for others. Nine said, I feel that Asheville City Schools should only have one middle school option. There is also another option where families could write their own responses to be able to capture what unique scenario best describes their thoughts and situation. 13 people wrote in the other box. Those comments are included in the handout I gave you. The second question was a free text response that asked participants to share their thoughts, concerns, and questions. The following sentiments were present in many of the participants' comments. Elementary families will not send their children to AMS if Montford North Star closes and will instead choose options outside of Asheville City Schools. Due to the discussion of consolidation or closing Montford North Star, families are looking at options such as private and charter schools. The issue of the size of the student population at Asheville Middle School trends as being the biggest concern. How poorly the Asheville primary closure was handled and the loss of students and teachers due to that decision was mentioned many times. Most of the commenters wrote about valuing choice at the middle school level due to that being the most precarious and vulnerable age. They want to have options so that they can find the best fit for their children. Many comments included a feeling of distrust for central office staff and the Board of Education. They shared concerns about Asheville City Schools being top heavy. They commented that the data being presented by central office is misleading. misleading. Families want the district to invest in our academically successful schools and not close them. There are only a few families who shared that they thought the closing of Montford North Star would be financially beneficial for the district. I don't have time to read all of the lengthy comments to you, so I gave you each a printed copy that I hope you will read. I'm going to share some excerpts. While these are not my words, many of them echo sentiments that I agree with. Number 79, <coughs> my older daughter attended Montford North Star and felt it was better to be in a smaller school. Now my younger daughter is entering middle school next year. We would have chosen Montford North Star over the larger AMS, but are looking at charters and private schools. I think the district's closure of Asheville Primary and now potentially Montford North Star indicate a total lack of understanding of what families value in education. No wonder enrollment is down. Number 80. I'm a parent of two elementary students, second and fourth grades. My plan has always been that they would attend Montford North Star for middle school, largely because of the size of the school and the strong leadership. If it closes, my children will leave the district for middle school. I have been a public school educator for over 20 years and it breaks my heart to consider a charter school. Number 118, with the recent flight to private and charter schools, it's probably not a great time to eliminate specialized options within Asheville City Schools. In fact, investment into options would, be, options would be, seem prudent. Number 143, I do not like the idea of consolidating Asheville's middle school options. I'm concerned about losing middle school options, potentially losing great teachers, potentially increasing class sizes, among other negative impacts. I cannot see any positive impacts from this proposed consolidation. Number 149, children are more than numbers. As education leaders, please consider the issue not just from a financial perspective, but from an outcome perspective. Montford North Star clearly has a good track record of good outcomes for children. And the choice to go to a smaller school is important for students who learn better in that set setting. There is also the issue of trust. How can the students, parents, and educators trust leadership that is looking for solutions solely based on numbers? Perhaps the new superintendent should be reminded of the emotional journey of the students of Asheville Primary that was shuttered before her tenure. That although it was not a fit for my child, was a jewel of progressive and innovative educational choice in our city school system. Give the students, parents, and educators the choices that make Asheville City Schools a desirable school system. Education is our greatest investment in the future, and public education is a, an essential tool for maintaining that investment. Please don't make it one size fits all. I hope you will read the other comments and take the input from these families, young families seriously. It is naive and shows a deep lack of understanding of your constituents if you believe that families will not seek out other options and just happily go to one large middle school. The families and teachers of Asheville City Schools wanted an elected board so that our voices would be heard instead of just a few voices in central office controlling all the decisions and the direction of our schools. Thank you, it Jessica. It's up to you to listen to the people. I know you're going to make me go away. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, we have Valerie True. Valerie, you'll have three minutes. Hi, I'm Valerie.
True. I am the mother of two kids. Uh, one is an eighth grader at Mumford North Star, and the other one is at Silsa, but went to North Star. Um, I'll keep my comments short. The main thing that bothers me, one, I think Asheville Middle School is a wonderful school. I think it gets a bad reputation sometimes that is not warranted. And I think Mumford North Star is a wonderful school too. There are caring teachers, caring administrators. Um, my kids have gotten a lot of support there. The thing about this plan that actually bothers me the most, especially given I won't have a middle schooler after this, <laughs> is that it really, it's not about consolidating the middle school. When you look at the financial plan and how the money would be saved, it's fewer teachers for each student. It's, they were talking, the plan has four core, additional core teachers going to Asheville Middle School. Four more core teachers for potentially bringing in 260 students and no increases in the number of counselors. And if you have ever been to a, um, the office at one of the middle schools, you will see there are kids who are crying, who are upset. Middle schoolers are kind of a mess. Um, I don't think anybody could say like, oh, the best years of my school years were middle school. So the idea of having less support for these students who are gonna be moving into Asheville Middle seems like those numbers don't add up to me. You know, the 1.8 million in savings or, or 1.8 to 2.3, it's not about savings with consolidating the school. That seems like savings of increasing our classroom size and decreasing support for our students. Um, I'll also say with the loss of, let's say just 100 students leave our district um, each year, that right there would be 1.4 million in losses each year in our district. So, and that's going year over year. So this decision has long-term impacts. It's gonna impact our high school. It's gonna impact our elementary school. Um, I spoke to a friend after we had a meeting last Thursday and I was talking to her and she has a kid in charter school and she said one of the reasons why her kid is in charter school is because she cannot put her, she doesn't feel like Asheville City Schools is stable and supportive. There's been so many changes. We really are glad you're here, Dr. Furman, um, and we hope that you can bring some stability. I appreciate all you guys who have stepped up to serve on this commission because why would you want to like volunteer to make really hard decisions? I know you did it out of love for the students and out of love for our community. Um, and so I appreciate you and just hope that you'll hit the pause button on this decision. Thank you. So that concludes our in-person um, comment, and now we'll move to virtual comment, where, same thing, um, those of you who are signed up for virtual comment, you'll have a um, timer in front of you on the screen. And we will um, start with Betts Conti. Betts, are you there? Yes. So Betts, um, you'll have three minutes. So we're ready for your public comment. Hello. Uh, so my name is Betts Conti. I teach fifth grade at Claxton. Um, a few months ago, we took our kids on tours of the middle. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay. Oh, flashbacks to COVID. Uh, so <laughs> I uh, teach. Best we lose you. No, sorry, I'm, I had the YouTube open. Okay, uh, so I teach fifth grade at Claxton. A few months ago, we took our kids to tour both Montford North Star and Asheville Middle. 
And I have a bunch of different kids in my class and they came back from those tours. And some of the things that some kids were excited about at Montford North Star, other kids didn't like. And some of the things that kids were really excited about at Asheville Middle, the kids who are excited about Montford North Star didn't like. I think it's really important that we have both of those options available to our students. Um, on a larger scale, I will also say that charter and public schools are the new destinations for white flight. Uh, not that that's the intention of the families who participate in school choice and moving to charter and private schools, um, but it is how the system of oppression based on race works. Um, this prol proliferation is evident that systemic racism is alive and well in North Carolina. And I know that the state doesn't fund public schools the way that it should. Um, and so that's a lot that you guys are up against. I will also say that in the past, ACS has come up with creative and dynamic ways to keep families in the district and to keep students engaged in their learning, like Montessori inspired schools, STEM and project based learning, schools with smaller student to teacher ratios, arts focused, and on and on. I know that there are factors that are beyond the control of this board. Uh, like the failure of the state to adequately fund public schools and the ways that systemic racism and oppression impact our larger community. However, there are lots of things this board can control. The salaries and the responsibilities of central office staff, the leveraging of community st and stakeholders relationships to find alternative funding sources, and the discourse with city and county and state government around funding. The squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? The decision to not only keep the doors open and the teachers teaching at Montford North Star, but to redouble efforts to shout out the amazing work being done there at no cost for families. Closing Montford North Star will not solve any of the long term issues. It will only create more. Please press pause. Thank you, Bets. Um, next up, we have Aaron Stern. And just a note for those of you who are online, there is a delay. So, um, Aaron, you will have three minutes when you start. Aaron, are you ready? I'm ready. Thanks so much for. Can you hear me? Um, I hope you can hear me. Thanks so much for making yes, this comment possible. Um, it's really wonderful and I'm really grateful that everyone is here and serving our community with their participation um, and of course the board's service. Um, but of course Asheville is not the first district that to confront declining enrollment and budget gaps and that's what I'm, I, I signed up to talk about. A standard approach um, to this type of issue is for district leadership to look all across the district at all the schools and to strategically pick schools for closure that are both underperforming and underenrolled. And this has been seen as painful, but it's also seen as successful because it can have positive academic and budget outcomes because the students are moved into higher performing schools and efficiencies are found. And so what confuses me about the proposals is that that doesn't seem to be the approach here. And I'm asking why. When I look at the data, I think, well, maybe possibly there's data confusion. Other speakers have flagged that Montford North Star was misidentified in the media as under-enrolled, but basically due to some data reporting from ACS that suggested 765 students could attend. In reality, it's fewer than 300. And also Montford has one of the highest and most stable enrollments in Asheville City Schools. So by normal standards, it's not the school you would pick. I'm also, noticing that there seems to be an assumption that whatever academic or equity gains Montford North Star has achieved through its project-based STEAM education, these would automatically follow the children, follow the students through a merger with a larger school. And I think people have spoken to the social components, but um, the PTO also shared research showing that's not a reasonable assumption on academics. And I fear there seem to be some unfounded expectations around attrition the financial savings of merging the two schools would come primarily through staff attrition. Yet, as we've heard tonight, students also will depart. And each student's departure represents a five-figure budgetary loss to the district. So if Asheville sees student attrition similar to what it experienced in the wake of the Asheville primary closure, that's a $1 million, actually more than a $1 million budget hit. But when I look at the materials, I see that 
The enrollment forecast suggests only a loss of 10 students at the middle school level. And a mismatch like that in concrete terms means that one, the needed budget savings are not going to be realized by this action. And two, in about two years, we'll be meeting to explore closing more schools. It's like a broken record. And that's what saddens me most about the proposals. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to participate virtually and thank you for your service. Thank you, Aaron. Um, next, we have Alicia Ear. And again, Alicia, there's a delay, but it is your turn. Um, and you will have three minutes when you start speaking. And we can hear you. Go ahead, Alicia. Yes. Hey there. Um, I'm a mom of four kids who have been in and out of the Asheville City School District. And um, I also met my husband at Asheville High in German class. And um, I just wanted to say, I completely understand the desire to move Montford North Star into the Asheville Middle School building for budgetary and convenience reasons. But I really think that this would be shooting ourselves in the foot and inhibit future growth and achievement that just couldn't possibly be overcome with a, a marketing campaign because parents choose based more on word of mouth than, than being marketed to, you know? Um, and I know that the system works fairly well in the high school, but I think that for middle schoolers, it's not going to work the same way because they're they're in a more tender place. And I feel like a lot of middle schoolers' hearts need something smaller and more caring and and more gentle. And um, I I know that we want to fully occupy this building, um, but it just may have been you know, a problem of our modern time that, that we funneled five elementary schools into one building and like the, they have wonderful, wonderful staff, but it might just be a problem of size. Um, and I just wanted to give a voice to my fifth grader who was going to be going to Montford North Star Academy. And I asked her if she would be interested in the schools combining. And she said she absolutely would not go. She would rather homeschool and then return to the district for high school if that happened. And I agree with her. And then I asked her about the choice of moving Montford North Star into it, uh, Lucy Herring and making it a K through eight. And she said, oh, that would be awesome. So for whatever that's worth, and um, just one more consideration, if you did go fully through the budget and you couldn't find any other solution to this and you had to lose a building and it had to be Montford North Stars, um, I just want to propose the option of, I know that this would also be disruptive and we want to reduce disruption, but um, Hall Fletcher, just location-wise, might be a more convenient choice for still combining the after school activities because they can just go down the hill and over the river and, and be closer. So um, I think that if you got a, a take on families that that might be, I mean, not Hall Fletcher family, there would be disruption anyway. But, um, but if you got a more thorough survey, I feel like moving into one of the elementary school buildings would be a safer feeling option than moving into the middle school if you had to do it. Thank you, good luck. Thank you, Alicia. And that concludes our um, virtual public comment. <clears throat> I wanna just thank everyone for being here tonight. This is, not, um, <clears throat> this is not the time for the board to have conversation about what we've heard. Um, we will have another um, open time for public comment. That's next Tuesday. February 27th. Um, again, it's a time for the board to hear your, your thoughts. Um, and this will be then conversation for us come March after we've heard from everyone who, um, who wants to speak. I really appreciate y'all coming out here in person and also virtually. It means a lot to hear from the community and hear your thoughts. <clears throat> um, and again, we'll hear more of them next Tuesday, February 27th. After that, we'll have our work in closed session on Monday, March 4th, where again, we will be discussing a lot of what we've heard tonight and on Tuesday and everything we've been discussing. Um, our next regular meeting will be Monday, March 11th. 
Um, also wanted to highlight one other thing, which I'll highlight again on the 27th. It will be um, just to mention that this is separate from all of our meetings, but next Thursday, February 29th, uh, we have the author Jason Reynolds coming um, with the, in, in partnership with Asheville City Schools Foundation. And I saw on their Instagram today that there are still, till, still tickets available. <clears throat> and um, it's a wonderful moment um, for our ACS community. That's what I've heard a lot here is talking about um, our community and that's a wonderful way to support um, the work that's going on in the high school where we hope all of your students will end up. And um, it's a wonderful opportunity to support an organization that does a lot for our schools. Um, with that, I will ask if there's anything else from the board. Um, and if not, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn for tonight. I move that we adjourn for tonight. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor?